Shaman. What's, what's, what's going on, YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Jamar Four here once again. I'm trying to get back into this whole swing of things because I have been going here and there and everywhere lately. So these videos are getting harder and harder to do. But I'm going to get this shit out, especially for this uh, new series, The Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. I finally got to check it out. Uh, I didn't actually, I didn't uh, set it to record on my DVR, so I had to go and uh, search for it. I tweeted... Uh, if anybody had a link to it and somebody responded, so shout out to that person. Um, so I finally got to check this out. I honestly did not know what to think about this. I I, I was thinking this was going to take one of those Love and Hip Hop New York routes where it was going to be kind of dry and the setup was going to be kind of all over the place. But um, one thing I will say about this, this uh, cast right here is that there's like, a hundred people on it like <laughs> this episode didn't even show like the other half of the cast like there's still I think two or three other couples that's still a part of this shit so we'll see but we start off this the show first uh, first frame is with my home girl Miss Tierra Marie now I now a lot of y'all may or may not remember Tierra when she was out Tierra was out or mm, 2005 ish with a uh, make her feel good <clears throat> and I think sponsor was her song but I was digging with Tierra and then thing is being Tierra from the same city I mean Tierra both from Detroit so uh you know I was like okay we go, let's see how Detroit is going to be uh represented on the show Girl, <laughs> we're gonna get into it. It makes sense, but we're gonna get all get into it. So, we're introduced to her and her background, and then we're introduced to this Hazel E. chick who was apparently a publicist trying to go rapper. Okay, that's fine. And so, her and Tierra are friends, and they get together and meet, they want to catch up and things. They're talking about how Tierra was so in love with Ray Joe over the past, over, I guess, an eight-year period. I guess they knew each other, but I just... I mean, a lot of people talk about how fine Ray J is. It's not that Ray J is not attractive, but I just don't put him in the fine category, you know? I... I, I nope. Mm -mm. And like I said, there's nothing wrong, but he's, it's just his antics make him, in my eyes, childish. And with him being on this show, I was like, Lord, I don't, I, I don't know how this is gonna go, but we gonna, we gonna see. Ooh. Ooh. Excuse me, y'all. Y'all wanna know what time it is that I'm recording this video? I'm recording this video at six twenty-seven in the morning. Don't ask why. This is just the best time that I could, do, <laughs> that I could do this. Um. So t apparently, you know her. And Sierra and Ray J have been had this on and off relationship for eight years, and apparently the last time they were together, it got violent. Apparently there was some blogs, posts, and him, him being with other women, and so she had to right hook his ass. So I was just like, oh girl. I mean, I get it. This, all you know, of course I understand, but <laughs> damn, okay. Um. So she wants to meet up with him, and apparently she's has this bitter sense about it because she says she hasn't been happy since, you know, he left and this, that, and the fourth. And I'm just like, oh, well, I understand that because, you know, once you love somebody, you can't bounce back. I feel like if you really love someone, if you're really in love with that person and for whatever reason you guys aren't together anymore, if you're able to enter another relationship and, and say that you're happy or if you're able to just bounce and not really feel anything i really don't feel like you were ever really in love with that person you may have had love for that person but i don't think you were really as in love as you may have claimed to be but that's that's just how i think about it but uh next we're introduced to morgan who's like ray j's right hand bitch they'll probably end up fucking later on in the season but uh 
you know, she's like the organizer helping him set up for his RayJ.com launch and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's cute. So it looks like Ray J is actually going to have like the mature, uh, persona in this particular show. So we like, okay, so this is good to see. I, I'm, 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 I'm satisfied thus far <laughs> from all the characters, at least, you know, giving me what I want as far as entertaining and all that good stuff. Next, we meet Omarion and his wife, hus, ooh, husband, ooh, child, uh, wife, girlfriend, fiance, I'm not sure what she is. I think she's his wife. But she's, you no, know, she's April, she's pregnant, all that good stuff. We all remember Omaya from B2K and his little cute little solo career that is no more. Omarion really doesn't fit, Omarion's whole shtick doesn't really fit in the industry right now. Hell, even Usher is struggling to continue relevancy. <laughs> Ooh, mm, mm, my bad, y'all. But yeah, even Usher is trying to struggle. And Marion and Usher pretty much have like the same, they give the same thing, you know. The little vocals, spin, the little dance and stuff. Uh, and the only reason that Chris Brown has a better chance is because Chris Brown can give you, has like the younger, um, more urban-esque lane that he can take, which is uh, what's hot right now. And... Omarion and Usher can't really give that. So it's it's kind of hard for, you know, that style of music to prosper. And he's tried to create his own little, you know, version of the current music. And it just never really quite worked. I don't know if y'all remember uh, Illusion, which I think was his last album that he released. I don't know if he's released this new. He's released songs since then, but I don't know if he's released an entire EP. But it had the I Get It In, and that was like 2009 that I remember that song. Uh, yeah. But anyways, B2K was my shit back in the day, boy. That was like, ooh, early 2000s. I think that was when they was like on top of their shit. But anyway, we, <laughs> we ain't gonna sit here and watch me be like a motherfucking 90s kid. Um, where we at? So they're in the hospital, you know, they're having a, um, a son. We saw that their son was born a while ago. So we know this is filmed like, oof, six, seven months ago. I'm not sure. But April looks like a pretty girl. You know, all the women on the show that I've seen thus far are very pretty women. I'm like, okay, we have no Jocelyn's on the show. We don't have any old ladies, no old maids like Mimi who can who can be pretty sometime when she wanted to, but this is not Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. That's over. <laughs> um, next, we have Soldier Boy. Now, when Soldier Boy came into frame, I... Well, actually, no. When, so when I first heard that Soldier Boy was going to be on this show, I was like, well, he's going to be the Kirk Frost of the season. He's going to be the one that I'm going to be reading constantly. Just because of who he is and the shenanigans, shenanigans ooh, girl, I pulled Jocelyn. The shit that he's pulled in the past, okay? However, thus far, he ain't did nothing that's gonna make me upset, okay? He hasn't acted his age, or what I should know. I, ooh, no, I can't say that because me and Soldier Boy are the same age. He's not acting like a fool yet. <laughs> I'm just waiting for it just because of who he is but and did y'all see when he came and he was like uh, a lot of people remember me from my hit Crank That Soldier Boy did y'all see that he tried to do the, the, the in the confessional and it looked like he was just like I don't know maybe that's just me that just thought it was awkward uh, but he has this girlfriend what's her name? Nia he said he's a rapper pro she, he said that he is a rapper, producer, and an actor what movies has Soldier Boy been in? I mean, I, I don't. I miss a lot of movies. I know I do, but what did I miss? Because apparently, <laughs> I missed something. Uh, if y'all know what movies he's been in, please leave it down below so I can check it out. Because obviously, I'm under a rock of some sort. Ooh, damn! I've been talking for nine minutes. I didn't get to the good shit. <laughs> 
Well, I've been away for a while, so this is a longer video I was going to be giving. Uh, so, Tierra and, Mar T oh, Tierra and Marie, girl. Tierra, Marie, and Ray J meet in this parking lot. Now, Tierra, this is a bad look for you, girl. This is not, not cute. So, Ray J is saying, you know, yes, we broke up, and we figure out that, you know, Tierra has, he, he confirmed that she's had a violent streak. You know, Tierra likes to get physical a lot. And he just said that the relationship became toxic and he just had to end it, you know, which is definitely understandable. Hell, I feel like you know, you can love somebody all day long, five ways to Sunday, back, four, up, down, swing it up and around. But if it becomes toxic and you're not really happy and you're just there to be there, it's like, fuck it, what's the point? And Ray just telling Sierra that, you know, I'm happy now. You know, he just moved in his new current girlfriend, who we'll get to later, child. Um, uh, and sh he's trying to be like, you know, why like, can't I be happy this, that, and the fourth? And she was like, you know, I think he said, like, I hope you're happy or something. And she's like, I haven't been happy since you left. And I'm like, Tierra, it's not good for you to, it's not a good look to come to a man or a woman and this, that you were in a relationship with that you're still holding on to. But if they've moved on, and they're happy, and they want to, you know, have a friendship with you. If that's the case, nine times out of ten, they're probably over your you guys' situation and ha and have moved on. And it's not gonna better. It's not gonna be any good for you to criticize them and make them feel bad for moving on when, in fact, it was you who had the violence streak in the relationship in the first place. So. Yeah, that's not cute. And then she has some stuff at his house. And apparently, y'all talking about y'all haven't talked in like eight months. If somebody who I've broken up with leaves their stuff over her house, and it's been like eight months, especially since I've started to date somebody else in those eight months, that shit's getting thrown away. Or, depending on how the breakup goes, I'm going to let you know. I can come to deliver your stuff to you. If you're ever on my side of town, you can come pick up your stuff. I ain't trying to keep the shit. But if you ain't picked it up, and I'm going to assume that Ray J tried to get it back to you because I'm sure he's not trying to keep it, then the hell, after eight months, hell, after one month, two, two months at max, this got to go. Apparently, you don't miss it because you ain't came and got it. So she was harboring over that you, uh, his girlfriend may have thrown away the stuff and then Tierra's getting all mad. Like, how could you do that? I'm like, what did you expect them to do, girl? <laughs> what you expect? He ain't gonna get in and keep that shit. Hell no. Nah. Shit, what for? Uh, where are we at? Child. And this, child. Tierra's gonna be the, the turn up bitch, the turn up queen for this shit. Cause she. she and, and I believe it. I believe that that's actually not even an act. Cause. I know where she's from. <laughs> oh, baby. Um, let's see, where are we at? Little Fizz. Little Fizz was in the uh, the group with uh, Omarion, B2K. Little Fizz is still fine. I ain't even gonna sit here and pretend. Like, <laughs> he ain't. Um, him and Omarion meet up. He has baby mama drama with his uh, this his ex, Moniz, who, what does she do? She, what well, I forgot what it was that she did that made her crazy. They had a big custody battle, but I can't remember what did did what she do. Huh. I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't remember. I didn't write it, so shit. But, uh, he talks about how, well, actually, I think it, uh, that she just didn't, wasn't able to spend a lot of time, you know, that their son, I think his name is Cameron, lives with uh, Fizz 24-7. Pretty much he has full custody, but according to the law, it's joint custody. Uh, she doesn't spend much time, you know, Mario's talking about, you know, well, uh, his, his girlfriend and his mom doesn't get along very well for, you know, reasons that are explained later. But, you know, they're just catching up at things at the barbershop and whatnot. And then we switch over to Monice. Ooh, excuse me. And Monice has a sex line. I'm like, okay, Candy Coated Nights. 
uh, or bed, what is bedroom candy? Sorry. <laughs> uh, she, Monice is talking to who was she? Who was she talking to in that damn hair salon? I think it was Morgan. I think it was Morgan, Ray J's little assistant chick. And she's talking about how, oh, you know, I have this sex line, and oh, you know, little things keep me away from my son, and even though this, that, and the fourth, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, there's probably more to that, because that just sounds, I know it's bad to say, but it sounds backwards when a woman isn't in their child's life. Like, I just always felt like it was, it, you know, on the maternal instinct. You carry this thing for nine months. And you just going to let it, you know, go by the wayside. I guess you do what you do. I, I mean, I know there's unfit mothers out there, you know, but damn. <laughs> you know, I'm just so used to the dude being the one that ain't shit. So it's like when the dude is the one that's actually doing what he's supposed to do, I'm just like, come on, little fizz. And he black. Come on, church. Yes. Yes, God. Amen. Good to see. Good to see. Uh, where we at? Uh, Soldier Boy and his girlfriend are at their house. Uh, her name is Nia and her daughter. Now, and she's trying to move in and things of this nature and blah, blah, blah. Child. I don't want to say this. I really don't because it's fucked up. But that baby looks like it's about six or seven months old. And, uh, you know what? I ain't even gonna go there. <laughs> I really ain't even gonna go there. Pretty much, something... No. Nope. Nope. Not doing it. Not doing it. Moving on. Leslie and April. Okay, April is Omarion's girlfriend. And, or well, wife, whatever she is. And she meets up with his mom, who apparently they don't get along, and now we're about to try to figure out why. Pretty much, because April said that her and her and her gets, used to get along, you know, at the beginning of the relationship, they were fine. But, you know, she said after she got pregnant, you know, shit just went downhill for some reason. And we learned from his mom is that apparently, you know, she used to work for, you know, different people in the business. I don't remember if she was a stylist or what have you. But uh, she used to have certain medical bills that her son, I guess, used to take care of. But my question is, why, if you were working with this person like R. Kelly, Stevie Wonder, and such and such, where was your money to take care of your own shit? That would be my, that's just my initial question, but okay. And, um... She was expecting her son to take care of, you know, her medical bills and this, that, and the fourth. And apparently when he got with her, well, not when they got with her, but when they moved, and I guess around that time they moved, she got pregnant. <coughs> the medical bills and calls, they stopped or they slowed down until they stopped. And I guess she just kind of like bitter and jealous thinking that it's because of her. And I'm like, I mean, you can't, you can't expect, and this, and I've seen this happen many different ways and just many different situations where the mother of a child, the mother and the uh, the baby daddy's mother, like the if you have the man is in the center, his mom and his baby mama don't ever they don't seem to get along because of one feels that the other one is out of their place. Like, the woman's gonna always feel like, you're the mom, you know, you support him, this, that, and the fourth. Like, you shouldn't be getting in our personal business. And the mom feels like, I'm the mother. I created all things that you see here. So I get to reign over all this shit. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much how their whole dynamic is going. I'm just like, oh, girl. You can't really... I'm, I'm mad at the mama more so because April looked like she's trying, okay? And the mamas just look like... Bitch, I needed this money. You getting in my way. Fuck you. <laughs> and that's, that's not cute. And uh, let's see. Lil Fizz and Moe needs to talk up in the studio. She shows the fuck up. She doesn't know where he lives because of restraining orders. So she's just trying to show the fuck up in the studio. Trying to be like, okay, well, 
I don't like that you don't let me talk to my son, this, that, and the fourth. He tried to explain, like, you know, well, you know, when you talk, I'm doing this. You call it this time. You know, he's asleep. I'm about to wake him up, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, no, nah, I don't think that's a good enough of an excuse. I don't. Because when a mother is at least, I mean, I know she says that she can't physically be with the child like she wants to. But if she's trying to call and, you know, find out things about him, you know, maybe send some stuff. I feel like it's it's only right to return those calls. Uh, you know, when you can, like, if you see that she's called and then later on there's a moment where you can, like, FaceTime and let her see her son, like, I feel like that's important. So that's not really, just because you, uh, you know, you can't be with them physically, that's, you know, that's fine if situations are the way they are. But uh, on Little Fizz's part, I don't think it's right that you can't, you know, at least give her updates on the baby. Because I don't, I don't feel like she's done anything that, at least I can't remember. I don't, I can't remember what it was that made her crazy. But I don't think she's done anything to where she can't even be updated on what her child is doing. Like, at least, you know, tell her, you know, is he walking? How's he doing? You know, if he's in uh, preschool, you know, things like that are important. So I feel like if she's at least putting forth the effort to find out this information, you know, tell her shit. Hey, girl, shouldn't be no thing. This is the end part. This is the good part. So Ray J invited Tierra Marie to his RayJ.com release party. And Tia Marie shows up with Hazel, uh, you know, already drunk. She said she's on her 11th drink. I'm like, damn, girl. <laughs> girl. Uh, and Ray J's girlfriend name is Princess. <laughs> yeah. um, and apparently she took photographs of the products or what was in Tierra's stuff bag. And it turns out it was like feminine products, food products, some other random shit. And I'm like, why would you take pictures and then show them to be messy? I mean, it's like, I think it's like Vagicil and yeast cream. I'm like, those are feminine products that women have to use from time to time. And the fact that you're another woman trying to make fun of her, like, uh, Tia Marie came over, she politely pulled Ray J to the side. And, you know, she, no, no, hold on. I forgot about this part. Tierra, bitch, she tried it because, <laughs> um, she pulled, she pulled him to the side and she said, you know what? Because if you disposed of my stuff, I feel like you should cut me a check for the things, you know, that were in there. And Reggie, the confessional said, bitch, I ain't finna cut you no damn check for the shit that I paid for for your ass. Shit. <laughs> and I feel it for that. Like, girl, if he paid for that, girl, you just need to let that. That ain't even technically, that's not your shit if he has the receipt. Okay, that's a gift. But, uh. Him, her princess ass coming over talking with, I guess she's overhearing him talking about her stuff and she's like oh is this your stuff like this um this this feminine product this this I'm like the bitch I would have been if I was see I would have been like yes you know that's the thing that you clean your cooch with you know you have to clean your coochie every once in a while sweetheart you know it's like why are you going to sit here trying to clown her over using feminine products like you don't have them in your own cabinet that part confused me. I'm like, what? how are you trying to play me? Like, that would be like somebody uh, trying to get on somebody for, for... They find out that they have condoms in their in their uh, uh, bedroom dresser or something. Like, this is stuff that you're supposed to have. And you're going to try to clown me over, girl? Anyway. Sierra didn't take too kindly to that. And <laughs> threw a drink at her ass. And that's pretty much how the episode ended, so... We see they're not going to get along too well, and it's going to be this little love triangle between Tierra, Ray J, and uh, Princess. And I'm like, is this going to be like the new Jocelyn, Stevie, and Mimi? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. If anything, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> but so far... I'm enjoying the series. It actually looks like it got some promise to it. Oh boy, we back into the love and hip hop swing. It just kept right on fluidly from Atlanta into Hollywood. So, whew, thank y'all for being patient with me. I am really 
trying to make this thing work given this current circumstances. But we're gonna get together and we'll keep on pushing and and I thank y'all for being patient with me. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, commenting, and this is the first time. I hope you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys for the next video. Bye bye. Like, share, subscribe. Washington. Washington.